Pride Month. It is Global History Night. We're here. I'm so happy about that. Global History Night. Test and test. That was actually supposed to be our test, but she put us on blast real quick. Sean, it's okay. It was Sean Taylor. It was just Sean Taylor's name. She's family. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Whoa. See? Okay, that was him, not me. Yeah, that was definitely me. <laughs> We're here for Global History Night. Very exciting. Yes, very, very exciting. That's good. And, yeah. Yeah, well, I just came from Vallejo City Hall. There was a little proclamation for, proclamation for Pride Month, LGBT, Pri, LGBT Pride Month. And so I went up to say hello for that. And then, so I went up and there was all these people standing there and there was just way too much talking. And so me and the guy I was standing with were like, by the time like the second person we're talking, we're like, okay, we're gonna go sit down. We don't wanna listen to all this. So I can't see why the what, the rest of the town would wanna listen to that. Then it turned into um, the usual people coming up and talking about relatives that have been killed by Vallejo police. Mm. And, you know, any way you look at this, it is a huge problem. Wow. Not only the heartbreak and the wrongness of people being cut down by, by police, but it is a huge liability. And the, you know, the city is just gonna keep paying out funds, you know, to settle, to settle these lawsuits. And meanwhile, our city needs other, needs other services. So that is what's going on here in Vallejo. It's Pride Month and it's, I don't know, man. Um, last city council meeting I was at got shut down and I don't know if that's gonna happen this time. I made it over here for Global History Month. So yeah, we haven't been here for a while. So what's been up, what's been up with you? Oh, same old Busy. stuff. Busy yes. as usual. Seriously, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just crazy. This is a hardworking DJ right here. Because <laughs> he's not just a DJ. He like, um, hey, James. Um, and okay, well, the world is busy too. There has been a lot, a lot going on, and I'm gonna start over in Sudan because we have been following that. We've been following that for a while and so the revolution in Sudan began in um, began in um, December and it has been and then you know it was, oh god I'm like so fucking sweaty this is gross um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, it had been, and then Omar al-Bashir, the leader wanted by the International Criminal Court, had stepped, had stepped down, and the military took over and was claiming that it would be turned over to, to civilian rule. And I'm trying to think, man, you know, I'm a historian, I should know this, but I'm trying to think, like, okay, when does that, when does that, it, when does that even happen? You know, when does the military get Stuff turned over to civilian war, civilian rule, because it hasn't happened in um, Sudan, and it has degenerated into violence. Protesters are being fired upon by the mil by the military, 
and three rebel leaders have been deported to South Sudan. And so they have been able to give interviews and have said loud and clear, hey, we're deported. We don't want to be here. Um, and the paramilitaries are also carrying out um, frequent sexual assaults on women and men. And <clears throat> so a general strike has been, has been declared. And I mean, that's just incredible, incredible bravery. People are still standing up to resist the military council and risking their lives. And I hope that I would do that, but I don't know. I just, I hope so. So we are still keeping an eye on everything in Sudan. The foreign minister of Eritrea visited Sudan. And that is kind of interesting. We've talked about Eritrea as being another very closed society and oppressive society. And then since peace was made with Ethiopia, there has been some opening up of their society. They are, um, the United States lifted, um, has had sanctions against, um, er against Eritrea and they are supposedly going to be lifting the lifting those sanctions and so the the information minister of Eritrea Yemani Gebermensky told the BBC that the cate that the categorization was erroneous and adding that the country's m removal from the list was better late than never and i feel like generally sanctions hurt people not go not governments and that if it was if the sanctions were going to do i mean obviously the sanctions had not helped all of these years because ethiopia remained a closed society um so i mean eritrea so okay and then the other reason that we have talked quite a bit about eritrea was that the late nipsey hustle um, was Eritrean, was Eritrean American and spent a lot of time there. And so we now have, um, another celebrity going over there, Tiffany Haddish, mm. the comedian. So that's pretty cool. She has become an Eritrean citizen and visits. And so she's been pictured with um, the Eritrean president, Isaias Afwerki. And so Tiffany Haddish gave the president for life her book called, which is called Last Black Unicorn, um, and wrote on it, Isaias, my brother, my president, thank you for doing what you do, and signed it with her trademark signature, he ready. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, I think it's, I, I think it's really, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know, Shante, we could, I don't know, I mean, maybe you could criticize her. I mean, there's reasons to criticize her for that, and there's reasons to praise, to praise her for that. I mean, you know, I suppose she could be taking the route of criticizing him for compulsory military service and all that, but I feel that she's doing a good thing by being there and letting people know and the and engaging with the country and and people and that seeing a young <coughs> Eritrean American in a prominent position engaging with the government is going to be good for, that people from Eritrea are going to appreciate it <coughs> and that if she just criticized the government she just wouldn't be allowed in so I'm really hoping hoping the hoping the best for the best for that and the best for, for Eritrea, and they still have the. There's a media. There's one media source that I follow that I follow from Eritrea, which is extremely, which is extremely interesting. Um, and okay, and then speaking, and then speaking of the media and and Sudan, Al Jazeera, which is the um, okay baby. 
she'll be back, it, which is the um, news source I really rely on, has been kicked out of Sudan. So they're trying to get their, I don't know, they're working, they're working pretty hard to try to get it, to try to get information. And so there's been a couple things going on in Ethiopia. And this is all kind of connected. All, all these countries are near each other. And one of the things that's been, that's being said is, is Sudan going to become kind of a reg uh, regional terror playground? Like, you know, that's what's happened in the war in Yemen. It's kind of overrun by other countries that play out their disputes in Yemen. And Saudi Arabia has been trying to get into Sudan and the last statements from whoever was speaking in Sudan was, we don't, we don't want them here. Um, but that's, that's, a, that's a tricky, that's a tricky thing to balance. Um, and, um, okay, so in Ethiopia, and that's one of the places that's we, that we've talked about as being kind of an interesting place with a charismatic leader that gets a lot of acclaim in the world, and we're trying to figure out how they're doing in their own in their own country and um, there's still a lot of ethnic violence in Ethiopia but a million displaced people have returned to their homes so hopefully things are gonna and, and that's in the northern part of kind of the northeast part of Ethiopia which is the most the spot with the because that's where the border is with Eritrea, and that's where there's been a lot of problems, and um, it's also the area where there's been ethnic, ethnic, co ethnic complex, complex, um, and okay. So here's another kind of interesting thing that's happened that's been happening in Ethiopia that I read in a couple different spots. Um, Okay, there's one of the things that, okay, um, one of the things that happens is, um, that's kind of popular in the gay community is gay tour group tours. And I've done some of, I've done some of them. And I was kind of interested to see that there is a gay tour group that is trying to go to Ethiopia. But the pres and they have been getting a lot of hate messages and the church associations are trying to ban the, this group from entering the country and visiting the sacred sites. And I was like, wow, that kind of that kind of sucks. I mean, I don't I don't have the money to do anything like that, but I would love to go to Ethiopia. So, um this tour group is they've gone to other countries where homosexuality is criminalized. Um, so for some reason this is coming up in Ethiopia and I did not know that Ethiopia had those issues because a lot of the time, I mean, when countries have really cruel um, and discriminatory laws it's a vest it's a vestige of colonialism and that's the case in Uganda and in Tanzania so <clears throat> we don't really know what's what's going to be happening with that in Ethiopia but this is kind of interesting um I just saw today that the, their census has been postponed because of ethnic violence and um, that can be a really bad sign because you need to have the census to have an election. And so that's already been postponed once. So I'm having a little bit of like, oh no, does that mean that um, Abai Ahmed is starting to go the bad way? So I don't know, we're, 
we don't really know what's up with with Ethiopia at the at the moment. There's, um, but you know, putting off the sentence, putting off the census, and trying to keep the gaze out doesn't sound doesn't sound very good very good to me. Um, so, okay, and we're going to be moving over to the Democratic Republic of Congo. And, <clears throat> okay, so the president, so just like, you know, refreshing everybody's mem memories a little bit, the president, Tish Tishikendi, um, was appointed in a deal with former president Joseph, Joseph, Joseph Kabila. And the opposition leader is Moise Katumbi, and so he returned home from three years in, F in exile, which is one of a series of indicted politicians cleared under Tshikendi's um, administration. And so um, thousands of supporters turned out to welcome Katumbi's arrival at the airport in, um, Lum in Lumbashi. So that's kind of... I mean, it's a big it's a big deal to let the opposition people back in back in the country because they really mean a lot. They mean a lot to the opposite to the opposition, and you know, it's very power. I mean, it's very powerful to pe for people to see to know that somebody's back in their in their country, and you know, we still have unrest because of Martin Fayulu who is still claiming that he won the election. So, um, so we have Tshikendi and Kabila that are kind of, kind of buddies now, it seems, or like pretend, pretending to be, pretending to be buddies. So perhaps they're hoping to have a position of strength and that is why they're letting Katumbi back. So we'll see about that, but okay. Back to Tisha Kendi is um, okay because we've talked about this before. Tisha Kendi's and Kabila's daddies were opposition were at odds with each other, and like, man, how do you uh, so um. Tishikendi's father was Etienne Tishikendi, and he died in Brussels in 2017. And his body, Kabila wouldn't allow his body to be brought back, and it was finally two year two years later. His body stayed in Belgium because of a fight with Joseph with Joseph Kabila, wow. and yeah, yeah, Tishikendi had served in the government of General Mobutu of General Mobutu who was the ruler for for over 40 years which is just crazy you know he was there in the begin in the very beginning in the beginning of the rev of um Congolese indep independence and so it was because of him that Tshikendi was exiled from the country. So apparently he got a great, well, he, the, his remains got a great reception. And so I'm like, wow, man, if people get, people get really excited when stuff gets, when stuff gets brought home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, rest in peace, Mr. Tshikendi. And meanwhile, okay, not only is, um, Dear Congo getting like 10 new cases of Ebola a day. Ebola has spread to Uganda and there's now a, the beginning of a measles epidemic in Dear, Con in Dear Congo. So that's bad, man. That, that, is a, that, is a real, that is a real problem. I mean, hopefully people won't, hopefully people will be able to get med medical care and not like fire at the medical staff, like what happens to the people trying to, trying to deal with Ebola. So that is what's going on in DR, in DR Congo, but 
man, when people are dying like that, it's really hard to picture how they're how they're going to be doing any rebellions or anything, you know. <laughs> okay, so, um, Mr. Tisha Kendi's body being re body um, being returned gets us back to other stuff being returned, which is another thing we like we like to talk about. Um, okay, Namibia was colonized by Germany and it has announced that it will return a 15th century monument to Namibia after it was taken during the colonial era. The stone cross is a Portuguese navigation landmark which was placed on the southwest African coastline in 1486. But then when the area was under German colonial control in the, eight, in the 1890s, the cross was taken and moved to Europe. And so Namibia asked for its return in 2017, and on Friday, the Berlin Museum formally agreed to the request. And Germany has also pledged to return artifacts and human remains to its former colonies. It's like, come on, guys. <laughs> That's just so creepy. They've returned... I don't know what it is with these, col with these, colonial, with these colonialists and skulls. But they're really into like skulls because skulls have been returned to Namibia before. So, um, okay. And one of the before we take a break, I want to get to Liberia because that is another country where we've had the question or the concern of leaders that are loved by the world but having um issues in their own country okay so ellen johnson sirleaf i've talked about a lot be a lot before was the first um president was the peacetime leader of um of liberia and then she presided over the first peaceful transition when the current president george way um came was uh, was elected and so she was on president johnson sirleaf was interviewed by mehdi hassan of al jazeera and i love mehdi hassan man the guy like nails people and he nails everyone okay <laughs> equal opportunity equal oppor opportunity and so um, she was interviewed by Med by Mehdi Hassan, and it was rough because I really have always admired President jo President Johnson Sirleaf. But I don't know, man. I think when it comes down to being a parent, that kind of I don't even want to say being a mother. I think it's I'm just going to say being a parent because you know. It turned out that all this fake money that was printed up in Liberia went to her sons, and she was pretty much flat out lying about it, you know, to to Mehdi Hassan. She got he asked her about it, and she got really mad and said that it was a lie, and that it was misreported. And he's going like, okay, I mean, it. I was like, oh man, why did you? She's just she's sort of like. That's her babies, man. I mean, so <clears throat> um, there's demonstrations um, above. Um, um, so now there's a lot of. <laughs> so it was pretty. It was. It was pretty. It was pretty funny. So, it, but then at the end, at the end of the in, of the interview i mean you know he said some like like you know i mean madam 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 president thank you thank you thank you for joining me and she said i'm not sure i'm thankful to you or <laughs> something like that but i mean this lady has had an incredible career and i don't know man i just sort of feel like okay just you should really just be relaxing and relaxing at this point of life like you know yes your son or your sons are crooks i mean so's whatever um so there's sort of like okay let jo let george way try and solve some of try and solve some of these problems so <clears throat> anyway there are now a lot of 
demonstrations going on in strikes against this corruption in Liberia and against George Wade's government. And so you just hope that, um, I mean, it takes time. And Ethiopia, I mean, Liberia had a terrible civil war for many years. And so it's going to be pretty hard to try and get a legitimate econ economy going. So, I mean, hopefully people will be able to have a peaceful demonstration, to have peaceful demonstrations about that and try and get some, get some of those get some of those issues resolved and they can move on you know i mean they've done really great they've had a couple peaceful peaceful transitions so there we go so we are going to take a break and be right 